This is the Bamboo Lab H2D. It's a personal manufacturing machine according to Bamboo Lab, and I've had the last month or so to test this out to its fullest extent. There are a lot of takeaways that I have, some good, some bad, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about all of them. The first thing that's really exciting is the fact that there are two nozzles. That means that if you are just printing two different materials, you can actually save a lot of those by switching between the nozzles rather than having to purge between colors. The print bed is also larger, However, compared to the single nozzle, the H1D, you do lose a little bit of the space on either side from printable area. So you have a little band on either side in which the opposite nozzle cannot reach. Now in practical printing for me, I found that while yes, it does save a lot of material, you still do have a purge tower to kind of make sure that the nozzle is clean and also it's kind of putting out a smooth line of filament. So it does still have some waste, but you can technically turn that off. But I did find a lot of times that when it switched between the nozzles, there would still be something on the nozzle, a little bit of glob of filament. So it did make sense to have it still use that tower, but it definitely did not have to purge the material, especially if you're using this for printing expensive materials it can actually save you a good bit. However, I do think it's something to keep in mind is that the cost of this is much more expensive with the dual nozzle version, but at the same time, are you really going to save that much money by saving materials? As in, this is an individual cost question for each person. Is that added expense worth it? Because it's a substantial jump up to the from the single nozzle version to the two nozzle version. Are you really going to be saving that much amount in the time period that you're going to have this printer over the next couple of years? I do think that is a serious question because at some people it might not be valid. One of the great things though is that larger area also extends to some of the other modes or attachments. So if you have the laser module, you have that pretty much that full size except the little band on the top where that laser module cannot go because the it sits on the side of where the nozzles are and kind of same thing for the cutting module. So you are somewhat restricted in your space, but you still do have a substantial bit. So it's nice that this machine has a lot of different modes you can toggle between and I think that is a benefit compared to the X1 Carbon and the P1S and it also is a trade-off that if you choose to get one of the I think they're going to do the H1 or H1C the color version uh, H1D which is the single nozzle version and the H2D which is what I have here all of those in theory should work with the cutting module the laser cutter and you can take advantage of the whole size so I do like that it's bigger in that regard now compared to the color version I'm not entirely sure what that's going to look like we'll have to see when it comes out for that they're going to be swapping out the nozzles which I one as an engineer want to say I kind of want to wait till I see it before I make that judgment um, this has two nozzles and we know that they are firmly attached. So there's not a lot of engineering points that can fail. I mean, there is a lot, but they've at least, I can see them here today. Another thing that I really like about this is that this case is enclosed. So if you do use the laser module, it is enclosed with iSafe materials that you can actually view it without having to put on glasses. Also, this is truly, I believe, iSafe in that long as you don't open the box up, the panels on the side actually are pretty safe to look through. I've had other laser cutters that have this eye safe designation, but if you look at them the wrong way, they only put the coating on the actual panel itself, and it has a lot of exposed edges that you have scattering rays out the outside. This appears to at least be eye safe all around, which is a good added plus, because once you put the thing and you shut the door and you run it, you're not really risking it there. So also there is a sensor on the door, so when you open it, it can pause stuff that's going on, which is actually an added bonus too, so that way you don't run the risk of hurting your eyes. The clear panels on the side are acrylic, kind of, so they're a little flimsy. It is something to take getting used to, but also keep in mind they are having protecting your eyes, which kind of does make sense. It's kind of difficult to do that with glass. The bird's eye camera on this, I did have some issues. I calibrated a couple times. It still, it does still end up being slightly off by maybe a couple, maybe a centimeter or two, depending on whether or not you're using the laser module or the um, cutting module. It still does have some issues there. However, I did find that it was useful enough, especially when using different materials, especially with the cutting module, I was able to still use it. And I thought that it was a really nice added plus. I would prefer maybe a real-time view of maybe like a have it pop up on the screen so that way when you're putting something on, you can put your design on there and maybe like have position it how you want. However, because otherwise you're just, you know, positioning it, running back, taking a picture, checking, make sure it looks good, running back, kind of 
And also that centimeter difference at times is kind of a big difference for some of these small like dog tags and stuff that you might be engraving. So it, I did find that it was a little difficult to get it to line up properly, even after calibrating a couple times. I think it changes at the different heights that it's at. So just be aware there. One of the things that I really liked out of this was the cutting module that came with the original printer is in it's included and the cutting module, especially with the vinyl cutting pad or the cutting pad was really good. Um, also, it comes with a pen. I found that I actually, that was actually really cool. So I was able to make a shirt with some different um, materials here. So I have just some stuff that I've been working on. Um, these are different bits of software that I make for drone pilots. Um, but I was able to go through and make individual logos and stack different bits of iron on vinyl to create a logo, accurate representation of different logos. The process for doing that, especially with the software itself is really solid. It can trace everything automatically. It can separate out into different colors. I mean, minus the weeding, it was a really pleasant experience. So I found that that was actually one of the things I personally enjoyed a lot out of this. Yes, the laser cutter is nice. I have other laser cutters. I found that the laser cutter experience was really good too. And of course the 3D printing experience is good too, but I'm stressing the other things because I feel like if you're buying this machine, which I'll touch on like why you should buy this in a sec, but if you're buying this machine, it should not be exclusively for 3D printing. Um, otherwise you should get like the H2D or H1D without the laser kit attached. Also the laser and the cutter itself all have auto calibration. So that means that it's, you can set it up, it will auto calibrate everything and then it runs pretty smoothly. Like the vinyl, you don't have to configure heights or anything. It just cuts the vinyl perfectly each time. And then also for the laser, it can detect the height, auto adjust everything, calibrate, and then go through and also cut things really good. For the version that I have with the laser, it has the pump already inside of it. So you're really not adding on or having to do a lot. You literally just have it calibrate and go and it cuts pretty good each time. Now for the cutting module, there is a sticky pad that you put the vinyl on or the paper or whatever you're doing to draw on. And I did find that that only comes with a very thin pl protective plastic sheet. And I have already been peeling it up and down. It does get very staticky. So you have to watch where you put that because that can collect dust and then get that on the pad. So I would maybe wish for something like more of a uh, robust protection system for the sticky pad so you're not just um, getting a bunch of stuff on there as you use it on and off and also my plastic sheet is already has a bend in it already has a fold in it so it's kind of already kind of reaching its end the writing tool i thought was cool um but i see that kind of more as a gimmick uh it's not maybe they could expand that into having the ability to you know you write your something and it transfers it in so then you can actually import your handwriting um, I just felt like, you know, you can type some stuff up, but it clearly looks printed in regards. When you look at it, it just, the handwriting looks too good. If you could emulate your own handwriting, then I feel like that would be a little bit better because at that point, it's easier just to print something out than it is to go through and put it, do it through all the work of putting it, applying it on the sticky pad, having the pen write on it. I think it would just be much better if you could go through and import your handwriting, maybe and have a little bit of differences. And then that way it would make it a little bit more personal instead of just looking printed. Other than that though, you can have it draw things too. But I think the whole point of a lot of those applications is that you're doing it yourself. So I don't know if it's really the value is there, but then again, it was an included add on to the cutting module. The AMS two is really good because it then exposes all of the tubes inside for the different colors versus with my AMS one, I've had multiple times where stuff is broken and I've had to take the whole thing apart. I don't even leave the screws in it anymore because I have to take it out occasionally. So I just don't bother versus this is very open accessible. Um, also with the inbuilt heating option is good. So also if you're printing anything that needs a higher temperature to remove moisture, you're going to want to get the AMS HT. That's what I got. And it allows you to basically dry a lot more of those higher temp filaments, which I actually found was really effective. I put a roll of carbon fiber in there that I've had for like three years and uh, carbon fiber PLA. And I for sure thought it was not usable and it was able to dry it pretty solid. So I think the heating capability is really good. I have an old cheap like PLA thing from like Creality or something that lets you dry filament. I found that the 
ability to have it set a time duration and then auto rotate was very nice um, and I think especially for your filaments that might be very expensive because that's usually what the high temp drying filaments are it might be a worthwhile investment because you're not going to get that out of the AMS2 it just can't go high enough also, Bamboo Lab sent me the air purifier, which is really solid. I found that was very robust, but at the same time, that is a certain trade-off because technically the air purifier can get most of the stuff depending on what you're doing. I don't know if I would trust it, especially if you're putting something really noxious. So I have it go through the air purifier and then I have it vent outwards. Um, I do like the idea of the air purifier. It is pretty robust and it does f work. It also does not really connect or communicate with the printer itself. So I find that when I am, you know, printing something or cutting something, I have to turn that on. And then if I don't also turn on the air purifier, it kind of isn't as effective. So I would prefer maybe some type of cord in the future. Like you could have easily had the same, the same cord that they use for the AMS. They could have plugged into the uh, air filter and have it automatically filter out the air too. It just feels like a, added box with another switch you have to press before you can print um and personally if you can vent outwards i don't think it's worth it in that regard if you can, if you have no choice but to pump the air back into your room and you can't really vent outside then that's a different story but it also is kind of inconvenient in that regard also in certain places like europe you actually have to meet some requirements for the air that you vent out so that it also makes sense in that case but still it's a little bit of a wonky workflow in my opinion. Now at this point, I'm gonna give you some really solid advice. The materials that Bamboo has on their website are a little overpriced. So I went to AliExpress and I got myself a lot of things that work just fine with the printer. You can get these 12 by 12, 12 inches by 12 inches, um, which is like the 300, 300 millimeter uh, size that the bed is. Um, I got a bunch of wood, uh, a bunch of iron on vinyl for like relatively like, I think like 60 or 70 bucks for like a set of both like 30 or 40 sheets of plywood and also like 70 sheets of iron on vinyl, all that. That's probably the way to go. And also the stuff from China, the iron on vinyl works fine. So it's not like, it's not like I, I personally would recommend you do that. Um, you can actually get more colors, etc. I know that's not what Bamboo Lab wants to hear, but it's much more effective, at least for me. And yes, it doesn't auto detect what material is on the bed, but compared to the filament, I personally think the filament auto detection is great. I also think the price on a lot of their filaments is really solid versus I do think that like the materials, you can literally just select from a drop down what material it is. Yes, this is plywood and it cuts fine. Same with the vinyl. I actually didn't even have to select anything. It cut fine the first go. So I think just for keep that in mind, AliExpress is probably a way to go for those cheap materials. Also the camera that is in the printer itself, I was a little concerned with the scattering rays from the laser, whether or not it would damage the camera, but I haven't had any issues with that. I mean, you would think they're putting a camera next to where a laser is going to be. They would check that. I've had some printers had issue, or not printers, I've had some laser cutters have issues with that. So just keep that in mind, that's something else as well. Um, the tool changing in between the different tools is really good. You literally just have a latch and you pull it down. You do have to plug something in or maybe plug in the air pump or something depending on what you're doing, but overall really solid. Also, when I was testing, I didn't have any issues printing. Um, I had TPU for the AMS. I didn't go like down to TPU 95A, but mostly, especially with the like brittle high temp filament using the AMS system, carbon fiber, it had no issue printing that using the different nozzles. So I did like that a lot. Um, but now let's actually talk about where this fits in compared to the other printers and whether or not you should buy this. So I have an X1 carbon, I have a P1S, and then I have, I had an A1 that I actually donated to a friend. So there is, that's my experience in terms of bamboo lab printers. And then now we have the H2D. I think the H2D is interesting because if you get the dual nozzle version, you are cutting a little bit of your printable area. So if you truly want just large printing area, go with the H1D. I do think the ability to use the lasers and also you have the cutting module is good. And I think that if you want to get that machine, 
I would say you probably also want to have a use for the laser cutter. Um, I personally really like the um, the cutting module as it is, the one with the actual to cut like iron on vinyl, but um, that's just my personal preference. The single nozzle version could get you by, especially if you're not as focused on printing maybe with two different materials. Um, I think a lot of people just like printing in white, having a big print area is really solid. And it is just a, in that case, just a bigger X1 carbon. And I think people would be very content with that. Also, the ability to later upgrade a non-laser version to a laser version is good. I think that you may want to consider and make the trade-off of whether or not that's worth it. I do think this can replace some laser cutters, but also if you're talking about laser cutters that are much large, a much larger area, you're probably just going to end up getting a separate laser cutter system and maybe just keep the printer. I think that like if you're printing a big piece of plywood, this obviously has restrictions to like a foot by foot or 300 by 300 millimeters. So you're really just restricted to that area. So I would say just keep in mind what you're getting and the trade-off that you're making there. I think personally, if I was making the choice to buy this, I would probably go with the single nozzle version because a lot of the stuff that I print, I end up finishing myself and painting. And I do really like the laser system. The laser system is really usable compared to a lot of the laser cutters that I've had. So I would probably go for opt for the laser cutting system. So maybe an H1D with the single H1D with the 40 watt laser. That is also what I have, by the way, is the 40 watt laser versus the 10 watt. I found that 10 watt might be really good for engraving, you know, maybe something kind of lightly like wood, but the 40 watt laser was enough to cut some things. And I really did like that. But overall, uh, thank you to Bamboo Lab for sending me this. I think another thing I should add too is Bamboo Lab, and I've said this before, does a phenomenal job with their review system for um, like people, content creators. Um, I've worked with Anchor Make, Creality, like all these different people, and there's usually like a very strict contract. I had no contract. No, they don't get to review what I say. Um, they don't have to, they don't require it. Um, I can say whatever the heck I wanna say in this video and they have been more than gracious. I mean, I'm not going to say anything that's a lie, but like more than gracious with basically allowing me to say whatever I want to say. No review process, no nothing. So compared to Anchor, Anchor and Make, which I'm going to throw under the bus, has been completely ridiculous with what they've required and the amount of reworks that they've done just for small details. Um, so one of the things that I would always tell people when you were just be aware, and I think other creators have said this too, Bamboo Lab does a really good job, at least with that part of the transparency. Now, if you wanna talk about the software ecosystem getting locked down, that is another story. And I think there's valid concerns there, whether or not this machine will allow third-party software. But overall, at least when it comes to my situation with reviewing stuff from them, I think it allows creators to be very transparent about what they like and they don't like. So I do give them props there. So thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon. And check out other, check out other videos on the channel for more reviews videos. Goodbye.